Right, we're live. Right, welcome uh, to Fixendale, everyone. We're going to talk about uh, the Kestrels today. This is a painting I've done here of Mrs. Kess, uh, and this was done last year when she nested in ash stump. Uh, so this is a big, a big, big painting that I've done uh, of her last year, and that's a close-up of the painting. And, uh, yeah, very special bird. I did a one-show piece uh, about her last year for the BBC, and uh, the dramas that unfolded as she actually raised her chicks last year. So it was quite a fascinating, turbulent journey last year, but we're going to look at what's happening uh, this year and what's happened in the last few days, which has been really exciting that we got an egg on Easter Monday. Just, uh, was it just before 12? Uh, 11.54. Yeah, yes, yeah, just before 12 noon. Uh, we have this uh, wonderful kestrel egg, and this is a, small speckled egg beautiful egg and uh, yeah so she's laid her first egg which is brilliant slightly later than last year uh, but the weather out here has just um, been absolutely freezing recently this is not seasonal weather uh, we had a similar strange weather pattern last spring that we had dry and cold weather so uh, we're hoping for it to warm up but there's no signs of it doing that yet and then briefly afterwards we had this yeah, so this is Mr. Kez coming in. So he's bringing uh, a little treat. This is a common lizard that are not that common around here. And these are like little delicacy treats. And he brings them in quite often in the courting process. And then this is the male kestrel. He's handed her the lizard and he's popped in to have a look at this egg. It's the first time he's seen this egg. And this is always great to see. I was sat down there watching this live and... Uh, absolutely magic and I was like just be careful with that egg it's uh, it's fragile as he nuzzles it around um, yes this is the first egg normally we're looking at eggs being laid every two days um, every 48 hours but the uh, second egg took a little bit longer this time do we know how many hours that was it was it's like an verging on another half day really. yeah it was yeah yeah, so an extra half day to make this next egg that we had was the second egg. So they will both sort of incubate a little bit on and off, which I, I always find puzzling, but this is the male. Uh, he's having a little practice incubating this egg, and sometimes he'll actually incubate the night uh, eggs at night a little bit. And especially at the moment, we've had really sharp frosts here, you know, enough to freeze ponds. So we've been down to minus uh, maybe three, uh, but that egg hopefully should be safe inside the nest. It's tucked away um, inside the nest there. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that these eggs are okay. And then we had the second egg, which was absolutely great. So that popped out overnight. And that was, what time was that one, Kim? It was about two minutes to one. This morning, yeah, yeah. yeah, so two minutes to one, yeah. So uh, yeah, just over two and a half days later pops this second egg out and she was quite exhausted after she laid this egg a lot of heavy breathing but you can see it there popping out it's uh, it's the shiny egg they always have a little coating of mucus on when they come out and a slight sheen to them and it's interesting how the infrared lights pick up these eggs uh, at night they look completely different uh, all of that speckled in color is washed out by the lighting um, but absolutely great to see that second egg. And uh, have we got anything more of them at the moment, Sherwell? Yeah, oh, we had a visit not long after that second egg, uh, the female. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I just was doing a quick playback this morning, and I saw her suddenly flaring her wings as we speed through the playback, and it turned out this was the this was the happening, the... Uh, the barn owl landed in, one of our barn owls landed in the entrance hole and the so female funny. kestrel reacts very quickly. She's pretty exhausted there after laying the egg uh, and she flares up and flares her wings and uh, sees the owl off. Was she calling then as well? No. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, she must have been calling a bit to frighten the uh, owl away. Yeah, so there's going to be... A few dramas along the way, no doubt, knowing our kestrels and knowing our wildlife here. Because we've got the cameras on them, uh, we pick up all of these amazing interactions. And last year was particularly dramatic for this uh, kestrel. So this is her down at uh, the ash, ash dump. And she's actually 
tragedy struck that day when a uh, jack girl went and broke one egg and then we got a barn owl during the day going in and these scuffles can get pretty serious uh, especially when someone like Bomber appears and this is a battle with Bomber and you know these are seriously powerful birds and Bomber seemed to feel as if he needed to uh, evict um, the kestrel there and this has happened a few times uh, but Bomber's got a little bit more than his bargain for there yeah I think that's Bomber but we ought to just check that back as well check to see if there's any scarring on the leg check it's not Luna uh, but I think it was Bomber because Luna was uh, actually on a clutch of eggs of her own at this time. So she will have hopefully been occupied uh, with a clutch of eggs. She raised four chicks last year. Uh, and obviously this year we've had a failed clutch, a ridiculously early clutch, which has probably not worked in her favour. Uh, so what we're going to have a look at next one. We've got a bit of what's going to be going on in the next uh, month or so now, really, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah, so just to give you an idea of what we're expecting and hoping to see is uh, a new egg every two days. Last year, she actually laid seven eggs, which I've never really known before. She had two broken, one by the tawny owl attack and one by a jackdaw. Uh, but she still then ended up with a clutch of five. Um, but each day we're going to get, hopefully every two days, we get one of these lovely eggs and then they share incubation. So we're expecting her to lay another egg in two days or two and a half days uh, and then uh, they will take it in turns and incubating these eggs but they can start incubating on the third egg but if she goes on to lay seven eggs that might be slightly delayed on to the fourth egg I'm not sure how ambitious she's going to be with laying this year the weather is just pretty horrible out there it's cold it's windy and there's no let up with uh, the weather. We've had the odd day where we've had a little bit of warmth coming through. Uh, but at the moment, uh, this is not very conducive to uh, raising uh, a clutch of eggs. So, uh, yeah, so there'll be some dramas on the way. Is there any other clips we're going to look at? We've got what we're kind of hoping for at the end yeah, of this Yeah, that's day. it, yeah. Yeah, so we're looking at around about 27 to 29 days. That is not precise because she can start sitting on the third egg so then there'll be um if she then goes on to lay another two eggs there'll be another four days uh overlap but the chicks uh generally hatch within uh, a couple of days of uh, each other and it's really really special when these little chicks hatch and we get these lovely little fluffy chicks coming out this is one of the chicks hatching quite helpless little thing can just about pick its head up uh, but this is what the goal is going to be, is a, a clutch of chicks and, uh, well, a clutch of eggs and then the chicks hatching out. But she is uh, formidable. She defended her nest last year against jackdaws, barn owls and tawny owls. Uh, and uh, she just needs to remain focused on that nest site because what tends to happen with them is the like last year when she started getting attacked by the other species, she was then coming up and sitting in sycamore stumps. So she was actually um, really busy, uh, you know, down at ash stump, and then she got attacked by the tawny owl several times, and then she thought, oh, my eggs would probably be better in sycamore, and started then actually sit sitting in sycamore uh, nest for you know, hours and hours during the day, and I'm hoping that's what she's not doing now, because uh, we haven't seen her for a few hours now. She may just be on the fence nearby. I'm not going to go out there and take a look, so I don't want to disturb her. If I disturb her, she flies away. Potentially a jackdaw can come in and do the same to the eggs. So we're just leaving it completely quiet out the back, and uh, at the moment we're hoping she's going to come back in soon. So we'll take some questions, I think. Yep. So thanks everyone who's already sent in questions. I'm going to try and answer as many as we can now. Yeah, just easy questions, Will. Which are the <laughs> um, so do, do the, the eggs need constant warmth from the parents? Uh, not yet. Well, once we get into uh, onto the third egg, possibly the fourth egg, she will, they will start brooding properly. They very much will be on and off the eggs, which I can't quite fathom out because you, you would have thought once they start sitting on eggs and warming them up, uh, that that's the incubation process started, but they can 
for the first few days, sit on the eggs for sometimes even all night, and then they're off them the following day. And it's only having the cameras in uh, and watching them for year after year, we know this is completely normal. So if she lays the third egg, and uh, she should then go down to sit. But that's a little bit uh, up to the actual individual kestrel. Uh, Sonal Vora on Instagram is asking, do um, the male kestrels mate for life? Yeah, yeah, the kestrels do mate for life. Um, our original pair of kestrels here, uh, we, were, we were together many years. Um, I had one male kestrel. He actually lived around here for 13 years, and we followed him right the way through his life until one day. Unfortunately, he didn't come back again, but he had two females in that period, and uh, he also had a mistress as well, which he raised two clutches with, uh, and the mistress went on. Uh, actually to kill Mrs. Kez one day. So, uh, yeah, it's quite a uh, tough world out there for them. Um, the next question comes from Alex. Uh, how long is the incubation period once she starts incubating the eggs? Yes, yeah, so we're looking at uh, 27 to 29 days, and we never take these incubation periods uh, completely as precise as that. It could be rolling over a little bit. Um, I never really notice it being under the recommended times, but I've noticed it rolling over a day or two uh, after then. So, uh, yeah, around about a month. We have also got a live view now from mm -hmm. the nest right now, if you give me a second. So we can see the... Is anyone home? <laughs> just our no. eggs. Yeah, so just the eggs are there. So they're the two eggs. And, uh, yeah, in two days' time, we're hoping for a third egg. But we've just got to sit tight now and keep watching. So the next question, um, do the kestrels, how do the kestrels know when to start incubating? <laughs> I'm not a kestrel. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in general, it's just on that third egg or fourth egg. Um, they are, you know, they obviously have an inkling how many eggs they're going to lay. Um, but that's, that's, that's in kestrels world, not in my world. Um, we've got a question from Whimsical Gold. What are the predators of kestrel eggs? Kestrel eggs. Uh, I mean, a, a crow has been in that nest box before and taken uh, kestrel eggs, uh, jackdaws, um, potentially even squirrels. Um, yeah, they're the main predators, even stoats, I'm afraid to say. Yeah, even stoats could potentially do that. I've not ever had it happen, uh, but they do eat, eat eggs. So, uh, yeah, yeah. if any, any predator goes in there, we're going to rush out there and wave our hands around. <laughs> Um, next ones, are the kestrels made up of a very hard covering, the eggs? Yeah, just like any other egg that you'll uh, come across, they're not as quite as hard as uh, a chicken's egg, but they're, you know, they are, they're just like any, any egg that you'd come across, so they are, they are fairly robust. Uh, where can kestrels be spotted in the UK? Ah, kestrels, kestrels are under serious decline. Um, uh, often as you're driving along motorways you would see kestrels hovering above the road uh, but in some areas in the UK they've actually disappeared completely it's not completely understood why um, which is a real shame because uh, they're really special birds but just around here we've got plenty of natural grassland and we still have the kestrels here because they hunt the voles uh, much like the barn owls they're fairly dependent on the vole numbers to raise decent sized broods so, uh, but they will take, uh, you know, shrews as well. They'll take um, mice, uh, but the mice, wood mice, tend to be slightly more nocturnal. But that their main prey round here is still, still the vole, which we're not seeing in great numbers. So we have a cold, cold, cold start to the year, which doesn't suit a uh, boom in vole, vole numbers. So uh, if there's no growth, we don't get the voles breeding early. Uh, which is which is just not good for uh, the kestrels. But in general, we haven't seen much happening with the owls bringing in uh, uh, many voles and things. So uh, we're kind of hoping, touch wood, we're kind of hoping we do have a good year, but we don't. Um, the weather patterns are just strange at the moment. Um, next question comes from... Uh, where's the next question? R. Tracy on Instagram. If these eggs fail, will they try another batch? <laughs> So, uh, again, that, that's up to the individuals. They've got to be in enough condi condition. Uh, we're a long way off uh, wondering whether they will fail or not. Kestrels potentially will second brood, but what generally happens with some birds is if they then sit 
incubate eggs full term and then the clutch fails, they're less likely to have a second brood. Uh, barn owls will, will always try and have another go, even if they raise a full brood of chicks, they can sometimes have a second brood if the food's there. And it's all to do with the food and how well they are. So we've just ordered, because we're not seeing many mice, we've just ordered some mice uh, uh, today uh, to pop some mice out for them, because that's uh, you know better food than the day old chicks. Uh, so the mice will be coming soon and we'll pop them out because we're just not seeing, um, you know, the wild numbers of voles that it should be starting, you know, they should be starting to breed soon and the uh, numbers building, which it just, uh, yeah, just chilly out there. Um, the next question comes from Margaret R. How can I tell the difference between a kestrel and a sparrowhawk when in flight? Oh, lots of differences. So kestrels... In general, well, there is one one thing. Uh, kestrels will just fly a lot higher, and um, you know they just fly about a lot more. But they've got long pointed wings, whereas sparrowhawks have short rounded wings. Sparrowhawks, in general, uh, will be flying along and they flip over hedgerows and tight to the ground like a stealth bomber going along really low level. So they'll even come past you at like knee height. Uh, so they're like ambush predators, whereas kestrels are up in the air. They're, they hover, which sparrowhawks do not do, uh, and they actually hunt from hovering or on a tall perch and then dropping down, whereas sparrowhawks hunt by flying along and trying to surprise birds, and whether that's flying around a building to surprise birds, flying over a hedge or through trees, or just flying really low over a field that's uh, got birds in there. So they're very, very different, and... Uh, yeah, if you see one sat up on a telegraph pole, it's going to be a kestrel. It's not going to be a sparrowhawk. They they um, like to be sort of hidden away. The only exception for that at this time of year is sparrowhawks circling. They will go in transit, but usually it's flap, 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 glide, flap, 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 glide, uh, a little bit slower than that. Um, uh, but rounded rings, long tail, uh, short wings is the main difference. And kestrels are generally are more visible than the sparrowhawks. And the final question is, how many eggs do we think we'll be getting from this bird? <laughs> oh, I'm going six, hopefully. Maybe five, because the uh, weather's cold. Five is very, very normal. But last year, when she, she had two broken, she actually laid seven. And I've known uh, once before that we've had a clutch of six here. And those kestrels raised all six here. So, uh, But normally it's... Um, Quite often we have five eggs laid and four chicks raised here, but um, that's uh, <laughs> it's with the kestrel gods at the moment, all of that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're just uh, hoping she bobs back in soon. Uh, the male kestrel's been back at about 11 o'clock, and uh, she may just be sat on a fence post out of the back, um, sheltered from the wind. Uh, so that's what we're thinking. We're hoping she's not deviated. Because one day she went away for a full day, almost. She was away for eight hours over the Easter weekend. Uh, I don't know if it was Sunday or Saturday. I can't remember now. She was away for eight hours from this nest site. Uh, and then she has then laid an egg in there. So we're hoping she isn't doing that. Mr. Kez went down to Ashton this morning and started nest scraping down there. So uh, they're obviously not completely convinced, even though they've laid two eggs in there about this nest site. So that's it, is it? That's everything. Right. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you all next week.